In this lesson, you will learn about internet browsers with Auto Hotkey. We will learn how to open up a browser, how to navigate to a certain page. We will learn how to type into fields and clicking buttons. To automate, we have chosen the Internet Explorer browser. And you might think, why do we do that? That's an old browser. Well, it is. But it's always installed on all machines, including servers, so we can always find it. And furthermore, it's never get updated, so uh, it's a quite static code. So when we write our script, we know that it will almost always work. So that's why we use it. We choose this Internet Hero Cook login page where we have a username, a password, and then we want to click login. The username that is Tom Smith, like this. Then we want to fill in the password, that's the super secret password. And finally, we want to click login. Nothing really happens, but this could be Facebook, an email, or a gaming account, or whatever. So, but this is nice for demonstrating. First, we want to create a script. So go to your desktop, right click, Click New, Auto Hotkey Script. Then we right click and edit the script. I want to assign a hotkey to make the script run. That will be Control Q, two colons. Then we can move a little bit down and add a return to end our script. Our script, the script itself where we will automate things, will go in here. The first thing we want to do is to open up a browser. That's just an empty browser. So I will assign a variable. I'll call this web underscore browser. You can call yours whatever you want. What we want to do here is that we'll say com obj for object, create, and then in, parenth in parentheses and quotation marks, we'll say internet explorer dot application. This one will open up Internet Explorer. We also want to make this visible because Microsoft makes this invisible per default and that is not what we want because we want to see it. So we just say web underscore browser and then we say dot visible equals true. So what actually what we do here is that we'll, uh, we could have made, could copy this one here, up here to have it up here and then just deleted this web browser thing here, like this. But we don't want to do that because we will use this com object uh, create up here. We will refer to that later on. So let's keep it this way. Now we can actually try to run the script. This one will just open up an empty Internet Explorer. So we can save it, control S. We can double click the script to run it and press control Q. Now we can see that we open up uh, an empty script. There's not an empty internet browser, that's nothing in it. Let me close it down again. We want to navigate to this page. So what we can do is that we can again refer to the web browser that we just opened. That's this one up here with a underscore here. And then we can say navigate. That will one will navigate us, navigate. And then in parentheses with quotation marks around, we can navigate to the address. Let's copy this one in. That is the one we want to get in. So paste it in, quotation marks, parentheses end. Let's try that. Control S and let me close down this one here. We don't have any browsers open. I double click to update. Press Control Q. Now we can see that we open up our Internet Explorer and navigate to our page. So far, so good. We could now we hard coded in the, the address here, but we could choose to assign a variable instead. So up here in the beginning, we could call this URL like this, and we could assign this value to it, just, just the internet address. So if this one needs to be either changed, then we can change it up here instead of our script. And especially if we have to use it multiple times, then this is best, best practice. So then in these parentheses, we will just say URL. This one refers to this up here. So we can save it. Let me show you that it indeed works. I double click here. Yes, please. Press Control Q. And we can see that we uh, made this work too. So far, so good. Now we want to fill in the username, then the password, and then click login. But before we do that, we need to make a check. Because often, even though you think that these pages has loaded, 
we cannot start to type anything in before it's 100% loaded. Then we will have an error or nothing will really happen because it will try to find this field. And if it's not there, even though you think you can see it instant, then we will have a situation where nothing happened. So what we'll do, and this one we will create almost always, then we will have a while loop. So we'll say while, and then this we refer to this web browser again, web underscore browser. Then we'll say dot busy. So while this is uh, this instance up here is busy, that means it's loading. Then we will just add a sleep. That means that we will wait x seconds. So uh, let us do this. Sleep 500. That is milliseconds. So that will be half a second. What this does, it says, is the browser busy? Yes. Then we will wait for half a second. Then we will ask the question again. Is the browser busy? Yes. And so on. While this is not true anymore, then the browser has loaded and we can continue. Let's just add a one second break here just to be sure. I almost always do that as well. So now we have opened up the browser. We have navigated to it. We made a check and we are ready to type into the username here. So we can do that now. We will right click the username field. Then we will inspect the element. Right click and click inspect element. And then we will wait a bit. We will go down in the selected tree here. We, I will show you in a few seconds because we want to get the idea of this username field so we can refer to it. Here, we can see that, uh, can scroll a little bit up, like a uh, little bit down into the selected tree. We found this input name, username. Then we get the idea, that's username. We will use this one here. So first we will find this field and then we'll put something in it. To find the field, then we will create a variable again. I'll call it username, then input. And I will say that is the web browser. That was our browser variable here. Then document, document, get element by idea. And then the idea we want to use, that's just this username here. So in quotation marks, username, like this. So now we got this. A field, then we can put something in it. Again, we could uh, create a variable up here with our username that was Tom Smith, remember? So I'll say username that is Tom Smith. Remember the quotation marks? So Tom Smith, like this. Because then we can go down here and then we will say username input, like this, and then we will say what will the value of this field be? So then this is just dot value. And that is the value. Well, that was the Tom Smith, the variable that we created up here. So that one is the user name like this. We can save the script now. Let me close this one down again. Double click the script, we'll click yes. Press control Q. Now we will run the script. It will perform the check. And then it will fill in the Tom Smith like this. Isn't this smart? Well, it's quite easy to automate web pages. You just have to understand the syntax. We can, maybe we could use, uh, move this one just up here. So we have it nice and smooth together. Now we can do the same thing with the password. So what we'll do is that we will say password input. That will, one will be our variable that we create for password. Again, we will say web browser for our browser instance and then document. It will be the exact same thing as up here, but let's just repeat it because it's always not. Get element by idea. And then we need to find what, what's the idea for this field. So right click, inspect element. It will come down here in the selector explorer, the UI explorer. So wait a few seconds and then we will have it down here. Wait a few more seconds. Here, that's just password. So we will have a parenthesis, say password, quotation mark ends, like this. Now we can put something in it. So that's password underscore input, then dot value. What do we want to put in it? Well, we want to put in our password, right? That is this one here. So either we will hard code it in, but as we have created these fine variables up here, why not create a password variable? So like this, in quotation marks, super secret password. 
because then we can just refer to it down here. Say password. I'll save the script. I will double click the script to run it. And I will close down the browser. And we can press Ctrl Q to run the script. We will open up and hopefully we will type in Tom Smith and the password. We cannot see the password, but then ver let's verify it by logging in. And we can see that we have typed in the password correctly. Now, what we need to automate is just this login button. So let me go down a little bit. This one will use in a slightly different manner. However, it's quite easy. So right click on the login element, then inspect the element. We will have it down here. Let me uh, close this one down so we can see it. We will wait a few seconds uh, again because this one need to, needs to load. Um, and here, what we can do here is that we can, uh, let me go up a little bit. Here we can see that the idea, that's the login. You have to know a little bit about selectors, but it's not that difficult. Just find the idea that is login in this case. So again, what we can do here is when we can say web browser, like we did before. Then we'll say document, get element, we can also copy paste, get element by the idea. And the idea was login like this. And then we can just say submit. So now we will just click on this and we can save it. Let me close this one down. Double click to update the script. Yes, please. Press Ctrl Q. And we now open up the internet browser. We will uh, type in the username and password and boom, we logged in. That's it. In this lesson, you learn how to automate internet browsers. You learned how to type in username passwords. You know, you learned how, how about selectors and clicking buttons.